So my name is Prema Sim Jain, and in the new Node JS tutorial series, today we will learn about the RESTful APIs. So REST is common; it has uh, nothing to do with Node, but essentially Node is a web application framework. So you need to know REST for uh, m creating any web application. Uh, maybe it's Node, or maybe it's React or maybe it's something else like whatever uh, server side client side you can use uh, so rest is nothing but uh, these are you know kind of some standards we will just go through it so what is rest architecture rest stands for representational state transfer rest is a web standard based architecture and uses HTTP protocol so uh, rest is nothing but a set of standards right on the basis of which you can expose or create your APIs basically web APIs which uses HTTP protocol so there are HTTP verbs we will learn about that so it's just following that standard whatever you are doing for example if you are trying to make a house no one is you know um, stopping you from making house whatever the way you like but there are some standards so you will have a kitchen inside that if you will have a, a fireplace uh, if you have the exit emergency exit and uh, centralized whatever centralized so they will say it's an energy efficient home if you follow some of their guidelines so that you don't waste more electricity and uh, that's how it happens so same way if your application whenever rest apis you are building if you are following some standards it would be called as the REST APIs and the RESTful web application. So let's move ahead. Now uh, it resolves around resource where every component is a resource and a resource is accessed by a common interface using HTTP standard methods. REST was first introduced by row fielding in 2000. A REST server simply provides access to resource and REST client accesses and modifies the resource using HTTP protocol. Now, when they call about resource, so uh, you can think of uh, employee. So, employee is a resource, or a student is a resource, or a book is a resource. Now, what you can do with the resource? So, if you need a particular book, you can say, okay, get me a book. You will say, update this book, or you want to create a book, or you want to see whatever are the books, right? So uh, they have just mapped uh, each uh, method towards uh, um, uh, the resource. So resource is book and whatever CRUD operation you want to do, they have mapped uh, in the RESTful architecture with uh, some of the common standards. Now we will learn about that. So here each resource is identified by the URI slash globals ID. REST uses various representation to represent a resource like text, JSON, XML but json is most popular so json is javascript uh, object notation json xml is another uh, form uh, uh, which is extended markup language in which you can represent data in some of the tags so the data uh, carries its own definition if uh, there is a uh, employee object in the employee xml you will say what is represented by name which markup will represent its last name, address, phone number, etc. It could also be a simple text which uh, you can send, that's not a problem, but uh, the web server should understand. Usually, people send their website text also using REST with some descriptions, but uh, most common is JSON. Now, HTTP methods following four HTTP methods are commonly used in REST based architecture. So HTTP provides a, a get, put, post, delete. Apart from it, there is something called as patch. There is something called as had, trace, and there are a lot many. So uh, they do not focus on that. They mainly focus on these four. Uh, if you know these four, you would be able to understand and create awesome professional grade web services. So uh, so HTTP is a uh, uh, again protocol which is standard for the browser so if I have Chrome or Firefox Internet Explorer whatever so those browsers uh, would understand or would call some of these get put post 
which the server would understand and based on which method has been invoked by the client or the browser they would respond and there are some uh, error codes and the status codes which are associated with the browser and the server for common understanding if it's a 500 error from the server side which means server is not responding properly something like that so we'll learn more about that but it's just uh, you know small heads up on this so put is used to uh, create a new resource delete is used to remove a resource post is used to update a existing resource there is a little bit uh, wrong sorry about confusion put and post has been interchanged so post is used to uh, create a new resource and put is used to update so uh, just whatever i said uh, remember that now please ignore whatever is written it's wrong uh, now restful web services so a web service is a collection of open protocols and standards used for exchanging data between application or systems so there are two systems initially one system is in uh, java another system is in uh, some other language so one uh, cloud server or cloud application can access so many systems for example rackspace is a big company and which uses so many technologies and so many systems written by different guys each language would have its own merit to design a particular system so they would not uh, essentially use every language everywhere right where they need faster turnaround they can go with python where they need more security they'll go with java where they need better performance they would use c vice versa right and, uh, and they can use golang where they have some latest uh, uh, technology and resources available now how these systems can talk to each other java code can call java code that's easy but how java code can uh, call or transmit or talk to other systems written in other programming languages so the best possible uh, way is uh, they would uh, expose their restful apis each component written in whatever language so it makes uh, language agnostic systems so if I expose some REST APIs from Java and also from uh, um, let's say Node and uh, probably third we can say Golang. So uh, any method can be invoked provided we can pass the data. One system is uh, doing some data crunching which is uh, you know uh, uh, analyzing the data, processing the data and giving me the output. So long as I have to use that component, I am able to satisfy the arguments required by that, parameters required by that, which I can pass as argument. I would be able to use that component easily, not a problem. So that's why uh, to avoid uh, multi-language complexities between the system and make them uh, communicable, RESTful APIs came up with standards and they say just implement these good, good, uh, get good post patch like there are four more standards but patch is also recently been added in their new standards uh, that would help uh, to communicate between the systems how that communication happens in later in the tutorial we will also see that and do that on one particular resource resource is uh, uri slash if it book then it's a book it could be airplane or anything so i'm repeating this uh, so that you can remember well a resource is nothing but after URI, you can name any ID, employee ID, that would give you all the details of that employee. So it would be URI www.google.com, www.premassim.com slash blog post ID. That would uh, help you by default to get the details about it. Same thing, if you do a delete on this, it would delete that post. So And it can uh, update that post. Um, post post means the blog post i mean to say the blog post so blog post is a resource anyway so now a uh, software application written in various programming languages and running on various platform can use web services to exchange data over computer network like the internet in a manner similar to inter process communication on a single computer the interoperability example Communication between Java and Python, Windows and Linux application is due to the use of open standards. 
Web services based on REST architecture are known as RESTful web services. So they are used interchangeably. Uh, they can call this REST or RESTful. They are one and the same. These web services uses HTTP methods to implement the concept of REST architecture. A RESTful web service usually defines a URI uniform resource identifier. URI means uniform, which is uniform and a resource identifier a service which provides resource representations such as uh, json and set of http methods so create a restful for a library creating restful for a library consider we have a json based database of users having the user.json so this is a one object which is user from here to here user1 user2 this is the key now this object has another object as value this value has some field attributes or properties so field name is uh, uh, whatever is the key and value is mahesh same with password so user would have username password profession and ids same way it has been written over here now based on this information we are going to provide the following restful apis so if you want to list out uh, all the users which are there in the system you just need to say list user which would be the URI uni uniform resource identifier method is get you don't have to uh, payload so what they have called as post body that uh, that it can be called as payload so they are trying to pass a payload so in get you don't have to pass any payload and it would list all the users in the system another is whenever you have to add a user you have to transmit or transform some something like this this kind of object user 4 with name and whatever so once it goes through it would add it into the mongodb database object database or any other if it's sql database it would convert these object into respective table respective query if you are using hibernate then it would uh, uh, convert it into proper dialect and then save it third one is delete user which you just need the id identify which user you want to delete and same way you can do for the update which is missing from here however for the get also you can pass some particular id let's say the uh, student number 420 you want to get its information so you just need to pass that or you can uh, you know update the view. so you need a id whenever you are trying to do a get but for post you don't need the identifier because uh, unless the resource is not been created how come it would have the id so you don't have to pass that now uh, i am keeping most of uh, the part of all the examples in the form of hard coding assuming you already know how to pass values from front end using ajax of simple form data and how process uh, them using request uh, um, object so let's implement first rest application which is list users uh, from the following code so this is a server.js very simple uh, stuff wherein we are using express module we are using creating the app after importing and then we are reading the data basically uh, we are using file fs once we have the fs we have exposed this endpoint which uh, and we passed a callback function which is a, this function which would have request and response so as soon as it uh, gets any request it would try to read uh, the file user.json with utf8 which is the format uh, mm, uh, mm, to read basically right and then uh, once it reads this this is another callback function which will return with error and data like if error shows up so it will read entire data and as soon as the data would get read from here it would do response dot end and whatever data it reads it will send that now we are server dot we are saying it would listen it in so and so port we are passing this uh, details to it and then uh, so let's try to run this now try to access the defined uh, stuff and uh, we have to put uh, you can uh, we can use this uh, structure basically whatever for the reading of the file so that file can be read so i have my uh, ide wherein 
we are trying to we will create a folder with the name rest so let's we will put this so rest is the name of the folder now inside it we will have a server dot js we will add this so we have got the code if we will run it right away it would it might not uh, give any response but let's try so we are trying to hit this but it uh, responds nothing basically so let's do local host zero income. we cannot get why it cannot get basically we are trying to so our resource name what is our resource name basically let's try to figure out that is list users and what is our port 8081 port is fine so we will say list users so it cannot get it right away why because it is it might be having some problems here it is not able to retrieve the data because it data with the name user.json which is it is trying to read but since it's not getting that it is uh, printing it as undefined so there is a difference between undefined and null if we will define it and it has no value it it might show it as null but if we are not even defining it and we are trying to pull data from there so it says hey i don't know you have not defined it so that's a problem for example we have data right we have nothing you know assigned to it for example we can so we have declared it and now we are trying to we are trying to access it so this is one of the value whenever you define you can assign it zero or when you do not want to you know assign anything you can assign null so null is a assignment however undefined is uh, when nothing is defined that is called as undefined so that's a uh, different thing altogether right now it doesn't have any value basically so it would say undefined anyway so let's make it work real quick so we have to create a file with name json users dot json so now our file has been created it will start reading that file but before we need to put some data inside this file. So let's grab the user object real quick and then we will successfully make our call working file. Right now we'll use the uh, entire thing from the browser, but then we will also learn about some REST client which would you know a step forward, which would be a step forward for us. So now we will reload this. So we see uh, all the stuff. So blindly, what it does it. Uh, so if you are using Chrome, and I believe uh, you are a developer, so you should be familiar with the developer toolbar, which is which comes here. So you will say developer tools. This tool will, uh, you know, help you if you will click on network. It called as XHR. So whenever you make any request, you can see details for that. What kind of request is it, and uh, how much time it took. So this is a resource list users. It's the endpoint. This one is the common base module which we called as URI. And then you have slash whatever uh, uh, resource you want to call. There is a 200 uh, OK, which is status code. So I was telling you about uh, it has some standard uh, status code. If there is some error, it would give you 404. If the resource is not found, if it's OK, then it is 200. Basically, if get is fine, it would give you 200. 
so i'll give you the example of what 404 looks like if you will try to hit this you will see the status code as 404 not found so this is implicitly uh, you know common understanding for the protocol between the client and server so i haven't made any changes in my code for whatever thing uh, browser tried to get this resource it couldn't get the response from that server so 404 was being returned and it has came up here same if there are some server errors or some authentication errors it would be 401 402 if uh, it's a successful get it's 200 successful post is 201 successful deletion would be 204 so there are some series of uh, the http status code there are some bunch of websites http status codes so one uh, x means 404 like whatever uh, starts from 4 is the first letter they are client errors 5x are server errors 3x are redirection 2x are success 201 202 203 204 whatever are success error 1 101 there are some error codes related to that as well so they are called as the information responses you can try grab wiki so wiki is uh, a good resource uh, to learn uh, the status code if you are preparing for interviews I would recommend you to uh, you know memorize at least some basic uh, error code numbers at least these top four from each category like for bad request is 400 bad request and 404 is not found bad request means the server cannot or will not process the request due to an apparent client error uh, malformed request syntax or something like that so if uh, to give you the example of 400 we can try so i think this will be some weird error Okay. this weird error is because the server itself was mounted now there is HTTP if you miss protocol if you miss server you will get weird errors but uh, there is uh, mm, you can say HTTP It did a normal Google search basically. We can have HTTPS. So HTTPS is basically a secured protocol which is not been implemented in our application our basic app uh, supports http we will go with http hypertext markup language and it uh, gives the details properly so this one uh, is um, uh, 200 okay same way we were able to reproduce 404 not found for reproducing 400 error you have to make some changes in the server side so if you try to make uh, some request server can respond with 400 bad request which it doesn't allow so now we'll try to learn about the add user the following api will show you how to add user to the list you can accept the same input in the form of json using ajax call but for teaching point of view we are making it hard coded here following uh, is the add user api so this is the add user API as soon as there is a post call made to slash add user it is going to uh, open the file read file and it's going to pass the JSON 
once it gets the JSON, it would add another uh, key in that data, which is user four, and then it would uh, get uh, like whatever the user object is there, it would insert that value inside the data, and then it will send the response. So this is not going to actually write back in the file but it would uh, give you a simulation that if you might have posted the value with some data that has been returned so to simulate it in a better way we'll also work on the real app in our uh, you know future lectures but just uh, for this let me real quick introduce you to the postman so that we can simulate the call which is uh, the post call so postman now what uh, problem happens is with the browser you are uh, it's very easy to use the get request by default it does the get request but whenever you have to manually do post request it it becomes problem with the browser this is a very good link which tells you in detail about each and uh, each error code why uh, what it really means so if you will click on that you will see description this is nice url so grab few links uh, from google and you will learn about it so gets are very simple and uh, post are a bit tedious with browsers so there are uh, chrome plugins called as uh, rest uh, client or you they also have external app for rest client which can be utilized in my case i am going to use this so what we are what is required basically is you have to have a url and here you can see all these methods good port uh, add options some are useless methods i mean we don't have to essentially use them to be restful post means we want to try one more user in the list of these users if this is a endpoint basically it's a get endpoint so first let's try to do this uh, I am just breaking out, uh, out uh, this lecture so we will go much more detail on how postman is used uh, you know in a de uh, dedicated lecture which would be next video but just to give you a glimpse that the get call which was made by the browser if you have to made through this rest client it would look something like this so thanks for watching and if you are interested to learn about more um, restful APIs and postmen, uh, follow the next lecture immediately after this. Thank you.